What's up everyone, Art here with No Code Devs. And today we're gonna to show you how to build a fully automated news engine using Feedly and Zapier. We're gonna source our content, use AI to pick only the best articles, and then show you how to export that content to a newsletter, a blog, social media, or really anything that you want. This only takes a few steps. It's super easy to do. You can follow along in this video and by the end, be curating hundreds or thousands of articles in a matter of minutes in a way that makes sense, it's clear and concise. Hope you like this video. If you like it, be sure to like and subscribe and follow for more content. Okay, let's go ahead and dive in and show you how I built this automation. We've landed at feedly.com. That's F-E-E-D-L-Y.com. It's core feedly is just a way to monitor information on the web. Super powerful tool. You can monitor websites, social media, Reddit, even newsletters. I really like feedly. I use it a lot personally. As you can see, we have all kinds of feeds set up here to monitor different things on the web, but we'll set up something new here today to show you how this all works from scratch. So if you click this button here, this is how you follow new websites. You can follow your own websites. They also pre-suggest a lot of content for you. So if you're interested in like advertising or media entertainment, you click into these, see what they suggest. We're going to do that for the sake of example. We'll click into marketing. They have all these different you know, individual sites, but they also have these bundles, which will be great to show you how well this works with the bundle. So if we click into this bundle, Feedly's team has identified 10 or so individual sites that they think is great for a marketing starter kit. And they put them all in the one bundle. So let's go ahead and click follow all. And we're gonna see our list of folders here, but we'll set up a new folder. We'll call it like demo three and hit create. Once we've done that, we'll see on the left-hand side here that this folder demo three has been created. And within the folder, there's all these individual sites with the content coming in. As we can see, there's already, if we click the top level folder here, there's already 59 different articles that have populated into this feed. We can look at it in title view and wow, all of a sudden we can see all this data in one place. And this is just day one, minute zero. There's already a ton of information. So. What we're gonna to try to do, as you can see, this could be overwhelming, is scale this back so that we can only identify and find the most popular articles within this sea of content and then share this information out to our social media, maybe, our blog, maybe, our newsletter, maybe, something like that. So this could be used internally for research or externally if you're trying to build some sort of you know content type of website or social media. So now that we have this demo feed set up, you can add, by the way, like an unlimited amount of sources into any folder. So if you had 100 blogs that are all pumping out 10 to 20 articles a day, you'd quickly get overwhelmed and have no idea which content is worth sharing or researching. This automation is gonna help us identify quickly which content jumps to the top, and then we'll be able to use that to our advantage and save a lot of time research and things like that. So we're going to hop over to Zapier, which is an automation tool, and we're going to go ahead and create a new Zap. Of note, we're using our new visual editor. If you prefer to use your classic editor, you can certainly do that here, but we're going to stay in the visual editor experience because I actually personally like it a lot. So the first thing that we're going to do here is to set up the trigger, which is essentially what starts this entire automation for us. If we click into the trigger step here, we need to choose our app, which we're gonna pick as Feedly. Now that we've picked Feedly here, we simply need to create a new event and they have all these different types of options here. So you can get creative with how you want to monitor content within your Feedly, but for this demo and walkthrough, there's this choice here, new popular article in folder. So what Feedly does on their end is they actually use AI to identify which articles are popular. They look at things like how many times the article has been shared on social media. I think they factor in some sort of SEO or traffic score into it, but there's a bunch of data that goes in, helps Feedly understand which articles are the most popular. And then we can pull that out in this automation here, which is super cool. So we'll go ahead and click continue. We just need to connect our Feedly account, hit continue again. And now we need to choose our feed. If you remember, we just set up demo three up here. So we'll just search for demo three and we can pick that out here. So now when we click continue and test, we should actually see some popular articles that Feedly has identified. Here we go. So this first one here is a HubSpot article. You get the URL, 
you get the title of the article, you get the author, which is super nice. You get the date it was published. You get a nice summary, some other HTML. Actually, in this one, you get all the content or the article, which is really nice. There's a ton that you could do with all of this information. Of course, you also see like the engagement rate here at the bottom or the engage the number of engagement and the engagement rate, which is again, a factor into what Feedly is determining whether or not these articles are popular. You could also always add in a manual step if you wanted to review these on your own, but we're gonna go ahead and just trust Feedly for this demo. Go ahead and continue with the selected record. So what's next? We want to take some of this content rather than just like immediately sharing it out. There's some things that we want to put in here as safeguard. One, we want to have our own database of content. We're going to use Google Sheets for this so that if we were ever wanting to reference what's been shared, we'd have this sort of like repository of content. But we also want to make sure that we're not sharing the same article more than once. And we're going to use Google Sheets to prevent that because if we're monitoring content on a bunch of different blogs, there's a chance that two different blogs may pick up the same story. A lot of times these things are syndicated out on different news platforms. So we want to make sure that we're not duplicating any of our content and sharing the same article twice, for instance, from two different blogs that the article happened to be popular on both blogs. So for this next step, we're actually going to choose sheets. And before we get there, I'm going to hop over to our Google Sheets. And we're going to set up this new sheet. We'll call this three as well to keep it simple and consistent. And we'll just put in two sort of headers here. We're going to do article title and article URL. Okay. So we have article title and article URL. When we add a sheet step here, it's always good practice to have headers in your sheet because Zapier looks for the headers as a way to identify the content. So I'll show you what I mean. So we're going to click Google Sheets and what we're going to actually do, again, we have all these different events we can choose from. We're going to actually want to look up a spreadsheet row. So we're going to go ahead and look up a spreadsheet row. We're going to choose our account. We'll go ahead and choose devs. Okay. Click continue. And here we go. We need to click our drive, my Google Drive. Which spreadsheet do we want to use? Demo three, which is a sheet we just created here choose demo three. And then within this demo three worksheet, we only have one sheet, which is sheet one. So we're going to choose sheet one. Okay. And then the lookup column here, we're actually going to want to look up the article title because if the article title was duplicated, then we would know that we don't want to continue. So we're going to go ahead and choose article title. And then the lookup value. So we're going to actually pull the article title from the first step as it comes in through Feedly and choose that here. So we're going to look up the value in this case, the top brands, blah, blah, blah. And there's all this other, all these other options that you can figure here. We actually don't need to configure any of these. And then there's this last checkbox here. So what happens if it doesn't find anything? We actually want to create a row for this piece of content. If it finds something, then we are not going to a row created. And I'll show you how to do that. So we're going to create a row if the item doesn't exist. And what do we want to put in that row? We want to put in the article title and the article URL. That's the basic information that we want. Of course, you could get the image from the article. You could get a summary. You could add things in here, but I'm keeping this simple for the sake of this example. So let's go ahead and click continue and test our action. We'll hop over to our sheet and we should see this come right in. There we go. The top brands on threads and how they gain followers so quickly. And here you go. Here is the article to this actual, the URL, excuse me, to this actual piece of content. It's showing in our spreadsheet. Okay, great. Okay, so I was gonna add another step to filter, but going back and looking at this automation, if we look at step two here, we remember that this is just a lookup step in in Zapier. So we're just looking up data in Google Sheets. And here's the thing, it doesn't find anything, then it's actually going to create that piece of content. If it does find anything, then it's not going to be adding that that piece of content, it's just going to simply have found it. So we actually don't need any other filter steps at this point, because no duplicate content is going to be created because we're not creating a row unless it does not find um, that piece of content. So we actually have a pre built filter 
already in this automation without even having to filter it there. So really the final step at this point, now that we've set this up is just to syndicate this out to our website or blog or any other thing that we want. I'm actually gonna show you how you can create your own RS feed from this content and then you could share that out wherever you want. But this final step could be like Twitter, it could be WordPress, it could be Wix, it could be really any other app that Zapier connects to. But I'm gonna go ahead and just show you for the sake of example, how you can actually build your own RS feed. So we're actually gonna create like a new app RS feed from this mixed feed that we created, which is pretty cool. So what we wanna do is we wanna choose RSS by Zapier, create item in feed. Here's where we put the URL, we'll just say feed, Okay, and then the feed title, we can just say demo RSS feed. Okay, and now max records, we'll just say 50, which is the max item title. Actually say, we can actually use this item title, the source URL, we can just say Zapier. The content, we could actually pull in the article summary here with no HTML. I think that's perfect author name if we wanted to pull that in which i think we should here to properly credit the author let me see i think there's actually just an author name but i'm just gonna grab this article author oh yeah this is the field this one happens to have his email in there there's also an author email if we wanted to do all that author link url so you could like throw in the image article cover image url this is the source url sorry so this should actually be article URL. There we go. And I think that does it. We're going to go ahead and click continue. We'll click test action to see how this works. And looks like it works. So it actually went ahead and created this RSS feed. Here's the feed address and actually throw this to a browse. Oh, we can actually copy this for browser. And we have our RSS feed with our one item that we just added. So again, what we're doing, we're finding the popular articles in Feedly. We are checking our spreadsheet to see if that content exists. If it doesn't exist, then we're creating a new row and then we're syndicating that out to whatever we like. In this case, we even created a new RSS feed of this content. Again, it could be Twitter, blog, website, it could be some other internal database, whatever you would. Hopefully this was helpful. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe and like it. And thank you so much for following No Code Devs.